Welcome back to Mike Ferry TV. Um, a number of years ago, I'm going to guess maybe eight or ten, I was invited by a very prominent infomercial company to go in and do an infomercial for them. And I said, well, what, what do you want me to do? They said, well, Mike, you're a great salesperson and you actually look okay on TV. <laughs> I guess that was a backhanded compliment. I took the salesperson part very seriously. The other half I didn't pay attention to. And I said, well, so why would you ask me? They said, well, we have a product that we want sold on an infomercial and we think you're the perfect guy to do it. I said, gosh, I'd be honored. What's the product? And the product was called Napoleon Hill's Your Right to Be Rich. Now, everybody that's anybody knows Napoleon Hill was the author of the phenomenal book, Think and Grow Rich. What most people don't know is that Napoleon Hill actually wrote several books and recorded several old reel-to-reel -reel, uh, films that are really quite spectacular. And what I wanna do this week and next week is interrupt what I did last week, which is tracking numbers, and in a couple weeks I wanna to talk to you about practice, by giving you some mindset thoughts to carry you forward because as we look at the second and third month of 2014, and we look at the things we have to get done, we have to understand that it's two parts to our success skills on our left hand, mindset on our right. And quite honestly, I don't know anybody, Napoleon Hill, um, obviously Earl Nightingale, these types of people that ha could have a more profound effect on your mindset in the words that they gave us to think about and use in our lives. So what I have here is Napoleon Hill's 17 Principles of Personal Achievement. Now this material is probably 65 years old maybe older than that. But what I want you to think about and I want you to listen to are the 17 principles. But it's so much fun to listen to the words that he used to define them. Because what I'll do is I'll give you the point and then I'll give you the sentence or two he wrote about that point and we'll talk about it. And I think what you'll find fascinating is the words he used. Now remember, I think this particular program I think was written in the mid-1940s. We're talking about 70-some years ago. Look at the clarity of thought and look at how it can affect our mindset to make end of February, March, April, May, June phenomenal months for you and I. Napoleon Hill's 17 Principles of Personal Achievement. Here is lesson one, definiteness of purpose. Here's what he says. If your purpose is the starting point of all achievement, how defined is your purpose? Without a purpose and a plan, people drift aimlessly through life. Here's what he's saying. If you don't have a goal, if you don't have an objective, and you don't have a plan to back it up, how do you expect to go anyplace? How many deals do you want to do this year? Oh, you know, I want to do about 10. What's your plan? Well, I don't have a plan. You know, I, I can do 10. I did 10 last year. I can do 10 this year. So what's your goal this year? I want to do 20. How many did you do last year? I did five. What's your plan? Well, the market's better. I don't have a plan. Well, see what Napoleon Hill says. Now, let's face it. Is there anybody more qualified to talk about success than Napoleon Hill? I don't think so. I mean, the top-selling motivational book, I think of all time, is Think and Grow Rich. And if you've read the book, you understand what I'm talking about. So he's saying that the first rule of personal achievement is the decision to have a goal and then a plan that sets you up to make sure that goal takes place. But I love what he says. If you don't have a goal, you don't have a plan, you're going to aimlessly wander through life. Earl Nightingale had a great example of this. Here's what Earl Nightingale said all the time. I want you to get on a 40-foot sailboat. Go about 10, 12, 15 miles offshore in the Pacific Ocean, anywhere, and have the rudder fall off your boat. What happens to you? He said, you're dependent upon the winds and the current to aimlessly wander you through and you hope that you get to shore. But what if the winds and the current are taking you out away from the shore? You have no chance, do you? Here's his second lesson for us. A mastermind alliance, a mastermind alliance, or what you and I say would be a mastermind group. Here, listen to what he says. The mastermind principle consists of an alliance of two or more minds working in perfect harmony for the attainment of a common definitive objective. Success does not come without the cooperation of others. 
if you read Think and Grow Rich, which I know a lot of you did, and he talked about mastermind, he said you have to have like-minded people working together to accomplish something and anything. We've had up to 150 to 200 different mastermind groups operating within our customer base of the Mike Free organization. Are you part of a mastermind? Do you have a group of people you can talk to? See, a great mastermind group on the days that you're flying high pull you down to reality. On the days that you're really doing poorly, they lift you up to attain that which you want to attain. If you don't have a mastermind group, start one. Now, don't, don't call me and say, well, put me in a mastermind group. That's not my job. There are people in your community, some are in real estate, some might be insurance, some could be in direct sales, that are looking for somebody like you to mastermind with. Like-minded people. Third principle, which I thought was great, applied faith. Listen to what Napoleon Hill said. Faith is a state of mind through which your aims, your desires, and your plans and purposes may be translated into their physical or financial equivalent. Wow, what did he mean by that? He says you got to have blind faith. Everybody has blind faith. You go to the doctor and he's going to do surgery or she's going to do surgery. You have blind faith that when you wake up, you're better. You get on a commercial airplane, believe me, you have blind faith. You're assuming the pilot wants to land at the airport, not the lake. That's why I always wonder why they say in case of a water landing. I don't want a water landing. I want to land at the, at the, on the runway. Blind faith. If you're raised in a church of any type, you have blind faith. So what he says is this. Faith is a state of mind through which your aims, your targets, your goal, your desires, what you want to have happen, the plans you've written out may be translated into their physical or financial equivalent. I have faith in the fact that every week, seven to 10,000 people are going to watch our Mike Ferry TV. It's interesting. We started out with 500, then we went to 1,000, we went to 1,500, then we had a big breakthrough, we went up to four or 5,000, and now we're running in a place, realistically, from 8,500 to 10,000 people a week watch this show. Boy, that's not a very big show. Are you kidding? For what we're doing, it's a huge show. And we have the blind faith that if we produce it, you're going to watch it. Number four, I love this one because I've heard him on film saying this one, going the extra mile. Personal achievement, number four principle, going the extra mile. If you ever get to see him live, I take that back, you get to see him on film and you'll hear him say this because he has a high squeaky voice. And you know, you got to go the extra mile. And first time I heard, I thought, go the extra mile. What is he talking about? Going the extra mile is the action of rendering more and more better service than which you're going to be paid for. When you go the extra mile, the law of compensation comes into play. Think about that. Going the extra mile. It's giving more and more service to your buyers, more and more service to your sellers, with no anticipation of getting paid more than what you're supposed to get paid. But if you go the extra mile, Napoleon Hill says, you're always going to get paid more than what you anticipated. He says the law of compensation comes into play. Do you know the law of compensation? I want to be paid more money. Simple. I have to give better service to others. The higher the quality of service I give, the more money I get paid. Great point. Principle number five, a pleasing personality. <laughs> you know, I, every time I hear him say this, I start to smile. A pleasing personality. Personal initiative, okay, is the sum total of one's mental, spiritual, and physical traits and habits that distinguish one from all others. It's the factor that determines whether or one not is liked or disliked by the other people. A pleasing personality. So let me ask you a question. Is your personality pleasing to others? Are you doing anything to create that pleasing personality? You've heard me say this in the past. Sometimes you have to fake enthusiasm, you have to fake energy. Sometimes you have to fake getting out and doing your job. And I know you've walked into homes and you walk in the front door and you look around and you go, oh my gosh, do they expect to sell this? This place is a dump. This is hard to believe. Well, guess what? You have to fake the personality that's pleasing to others, but we also know this. When you have a pleasing personality, people are attracted to you. You're always gonna have more people walk, yeah, you know, what, what do you do and, and how do you operate and what are you trying to accomplish and how can I be part of that? All right, let's go to principle number six, personal initiative. 
the power that inspires the completion of that which one has began. It is the power that starts all action, personal initiative. No person is free till he learns to do his own thinking and gains the courage to act on his own, personal initiative. Uh, are, are, are you guys gonna go knock on doors with me and are you guys gonna role play and practice and are you, are you guys trying to go out and get a lot of listings? Because if you are I well, no, no, personal initiative. I want you all to do well, but I want me to do well first. And I'm gonna do what it takes to do well, personal initiative. Standing up for what you want, standing up for what you believe in. If you don't have any belief, what can you stand up for? Uh, watch number seven, positive mental attitude, what he referred to as PMA, positive mental attitude. Positive mental attitude is the right mental attitude in all circumstances. Success attracts more success while failure attracts more failure. Positive mental attitude. There's been tens of thousands of books written on this topic that he talked about in 1935. Positive mental attitude. Having the right thoughts up here on a regular basis so you can accomplish that which what you're trying to accomplish. And then lesson eight of our principles of the 17 principles. Okay, watch this. The word enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is faith in action. It's the intense emotion known as burning desire. It comes from within although it radiates outwardly in the expression of one's voice and countenance. Watch, enthusiasm, N-theo, the God life within coming out. Well, Mike, I'm an atheist. Fine, but there's something in that's got to come out. And if you look in the dictionary, enthusiasm, the God life within. Everybody wants to be around people that are excited about what they do. Everybody wants to be around people that are enthusiastic all the time. Can you be enthusiastic all the time? It's hard, but watch this. If you have a goal, part of a mastermind, you have blind faith, willing to go the extra mile, you have a pleasing personality, you have some initiative to get things done, and you have PMA with a little enthusiasm, guess what? You're gonna get what you want out of this business. Your broker and Mike Ferry and our team have one simple goal, to get you, one out, get you what you want out of this business. Think about these eight principles from Napoleon Hill, and we'll have some fun next week with the next group. See you next week.